Three knobs oh, are hey, there's too, no though. sound here, and now the sound is on. I fixed it. I wow. fixed it. Hold on, guys. If you're watching well live. Wow. You know, I, I, it's funny, because I thought that was actually one of the smoothest starts we've ever had. I know. Well, it is, it is smooth for this the is why, This is why we know. don't start on time, usually. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> so welcome if you're watching live guys don't forget that we do go live every monday and wednesday at 8 p.m eastern daylight time and that's 5 p.m pacific daylight time as well over at stream.turn84spodcast.com but to jump into some brand new news we are on facebook at facebook.com forward slash tforce podcast go like us on there we do post all the new episodes and you can follow us if you don't follow us on twitter which is also twitter.com forward slash tforce podcast uh there is, uh, you guys can get t-shirts, of course, store.turn84spodcast.com. All the t-shirts are out there right now. They're $20 or like $24 shipped inside the U.S., just a little bit more if you're outside of it. Guys, go help and support us by picking up a t-shirt, showing all your friends and family how much you love listening and being a nerd. With hey, your w- weird question. Yeah. PAX East was last weekend. We're getting there. Did we get any? Did we have any shirt sightings? We had. Uh, I don't know if we had shirt sightings. T- Mott has not gotten back with me about that. Uh, he doesn't have any more shirts left, though. Uh, oh well, that's good. Or that's buttons. Good. He gave away 100 buttons while he was out there. Oh, that's good. Nice. That's pretty, that's pretty good. So if you're listening to this podcast and you were at PAX East, please email us a picture of you wearing the button, and we'll or, and we'll put it up on Twitter or retweet it if you have Twitter. You know, you can always send us that information so don't forget we are we do have an audible trial you'll help support the podcast audibletrial.com forward slash tforce podcast go grab a book if you get a free audiobook for signing up and then after that 30 days if you continue to pay you can grab more audiobooks to supplement the podcast as we always say um and a few other quick things here battle arena so you guys have been writing us emailing us saying when's battle arena what's going on with battle arena yada 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 uh well astradition and honey badger have taken over battle arena for us and they're going to be doing those at tuesday nights on the main t-force podcast channel so if you're watching right now live this channel they will be alive tomorrow at 7 p.m eastern daylight time to get into those games you join the in-game chat channel t-force on na and you guys can join up and have your nice. 5v5s casted thanks for taking that over guys Yes, they've been doing a fantastic job of it. They stepped up to the plate. Just they kind of just took it over. Like they didn't even ask me. They was like, <laughs> "We're gonna do it," and I said, eh. "Eh, okay." They they asked me, and I was like, <clears throat> "Ask Adam," and then they just started doing it because fuck you, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine with me. It it got a little draining to ask do it every mother. week with two podcasts plus all the stuff that goes on in the back end and a forty hour week job. So I'm glad somebody else is taking over it for me. One last thing in news, and this is if you haven't listened to any other news, you got to listen to this now. We have a contest we are running for the next two, uh, yeah, two weeks, four episodes. LOL-coaching.com has given us one free hour of professional-level coaching or high-diamond-level coaching. These guys are Diamond 1, Diamond 2, Challenger level, and they will coach you for one hour in any role that you choose across the Summoner's Rift. But to win this, you have to go to tinyurl.com forward slash LOL coach, find what scene we talk about, there's the word scene and right before that we talk about a certain scene in uh, that we cover in that article take that keyword and email us at contest at trinityforcepodcast.com so go find the scene that we cover in that article tell us that keyword email contest at trinityforcepodcast.com and you'll be in the running for your one free hour of coaching sounds simple enough yeah it was it's contest at trinityforcepodcast.com say it three times Again, and people remember contest at trinityforcepodcast.com well not dot at oh <laughs> all, right, all right, now you confused everybody. <laughs> You're right. Email contest at trinityforcepodcast.com instead of feedback. So, uh, Dom, are these donations up to date? Did we already thank these people last week? Have we changed them? Uh, two of them we haven't thanked. I'm not sure about that third one. I hadn't deleted the email, but it's possible I update. Oh, you know, so thank them again. Let's thank them again. So, guys, if, if you guys do donate to the podcast, there's a donation button, and we are going to thank everybody who's helped us, helped us out. So, Trevor, thank you very much for your $10 donation. Ben, for your $25 donation. And Corey, for your $20 donation. You guys are helping the podcast quite awesome. a bit. I was about to say, if you want a shout out on the podcast and you donate, you might get two shout outs because we're bad at remembering. <laughs> <laughs> and Dom doesn't update the document because he goes to baseball games on Sundays and then watches yeah. Captain America and drinks. And yeah, yesterday was a good day. He sounds American. like he's living the dream. Yesterday was a pretty good day. <laughs> yeah. Gotta say. That's all right. I, I, then, I got, then I got home and watched two of the games of uh, <laughs> NACS. Which we talk about on the T-Force LCS rundown. 
Yeah, I was watching those instead of watching you guys. You probably cause... it's probably a good thing you didn't watch us. Let's be honest. <laughs> we, we, Sean and I took over for Montgomery. I don't know Mando what Tom. you constitute as taking over, but that's not what we did. Hey, Greg took his shirt off. He did. That's true. That was a magical moment. <laughs> it was a magical moment. Hey, that's really weird. He You're he Hulk Hogan it too. It. He like grabbed his shirt and ripped it <laughs> oh, open. Oh wow! Like, all right, manly. Like I, I'm <laughs> afraid to cool. always do that. My camera. Okay, yeah. let's get into Summoner's Rift and talk about League of Legends. Uh, Chira, are you ready to stand on a soapbox, buddy? Yeah, do you want me to? Yeah, we're going to talk about Rengar. So the community perception well, of Rengar. Go ahead. You got to get out record. You got to get out Hornet's soapbox. Or is it? <laughs> right, hold on. Like, you, need to, like, to you. Have a, you need to have a thing. <sighs> Called a soapbox? Yeah. Get one Maybe made. just a little animated thing on the on the UI that or goes just like a, a box that Dove would come in or something. I'm gonna make a box and or, I'm gonna it put it next to the person when someone's on a soapbox. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna make it for next time we do this. I'm gonna make a box and I'm gonna put I'm gonna click it in the OBS and it's gonna appear next to the person's name so we know that they're on their soapbox. <laughs> that would go. be awesome. <laughs> it's a soapbox rant time. I don't have to remember to do that, but you gotta put but you gotta put Hornet soapbox on there. <laughs> it has to say Hornet soapbox. It has to say Hornet soapbox. Or it yeah, could but, just have a picture of like a bee. Well, people and, don't realize what who Hornet is. He was he's an ex host of the podcast, and he used to stand in his soapbox. But let's talk about Rengar. So Rengar <laughs> is, has gotten a rework in four point five. There has been a number of changes to him. We've talked about him two podcasts ago, and a couple podcasts since then. And we have been playing him in you know internally, trying to get a feel for how he's being play played. But the community seems to be rejecting the. Rework. They seem to think he's really bad. Yeah. And I attribute a lot of that to like, if you haven't seen the community's reaction, it's hard to explain. They just don't feel like he, he they don't feel like he played like he used to, and that's what you know point of rework. He's they're not supposed to play like he's used to. But then they start breaking him down like, oh, he can be seen when he's in stealth. Uh, Q doesn't hit as hard as it used to. You don't get the attack speed. You know, it doesn't proc off turrets. You know, this and that and little little these little gripes and things that people are haven't fully grasped how to play him. And I'm gonna let Chira take it from here and how you've been playing Guys. him. What you think? Okay, so Bro, just for. A little bit of context. I had not played Rengar. Um, I'd, I'd played two games of Rengar <coughs> before the rework. So going into the rework, I had like this really fresh um, perspective on going into play. And um, I've been shitting on people. So <laughs> I don't really know where all of this... this... Or even playing him. I, I've been playing him strictly out of the jungle. I don't play him top lane. I basically build Feral Flare on him. And I... I farm the shit out of my jungle and I gank when I can make ganks happen. But for the most part, he has some insane clear speed and I don't think you should take him anywhere outside of the jungle just because you can really farm Feral Flare stacks insanely fast. And if you get a gank off, you can build him even faster. So, what is making his clear speed so insane? And I'm going to say that, like I ask because I look at it and think, okay, he can kill shit, but like he's not going to do it that fast. <laughs> He gets so. okay. So he on his on his uh, five stacks of his ferocity <laughs> for his Q, he gets an insane amount of attack speed for however many seconds afterwards. And between that and getting um, like the beginnings of a blood razor into a wriggles, and you get the extra attack speed and damage out on that, you get so many extra hits off on uh, on any of the jungle camps that you just mow them down. Um, a second part to that is. Your sustain, so, which is your W, does AoE damage anyway, and for the most part, his cooldowns are pretty short, so you can just kind of run through things and clear as you go extremely quickly. I mean, W's 12 seconds. But compared to but, what it used to be, it's nothing. I don't know. And, yeah. you, and, and you, every time you get full ferocity and you use an ability, you get to use it again right afterwards for the most part. So for perspective, is his, is his first clear rough at all? Um... He he sits a little lower health wise than a lot of other junglers. Yeah, I feel like that's the big one. Big, the big one is the first clear, you know. If yeah, you decent leash, and then you're fine. And and that's the thing, like his fighting that first buff by yourself without any leash. You, it's it's not. You, it's definitely doable. You'll be a little yeah, lower right. in health than like playing somebody like Nocturne or Vi or Elise or somebody like that. Um, but the thing is, like once he gets rolling. He just he, he mows stuff down. And another thing I see people build, a lot of people have been building like a Trinity Forest or a Blade of the Rune King on him uh, with... Um, Feral Flare. With Feral Flare. I haven't been doing that at all. I've basically... Um, 
I, I rush a feral, uh, I rush out Wriggles as fast as I can to, you know, start being Farming able to see where I'm at yeah. feral flare wise and try to get that as fast as possible just because it's such a good item, um, as we've talked about. Um, the second part is I get a Hydra on him and I'll typically get the Vamp Scepter early to completely get rid of all the. Uh, he, he has the sustain through his W, but if you get the Vamp Scepter early, you don't have any problem sustaining at all. You can gank any lane you want, basically at full health um, from any clear. It, it's you get a lot of life steal back between that and the Wriggles. I think people um, need to keep in mind though that the Madrid's Blood Razor, or not Madrid's, excuse me, that the Blood Razor does have a main proc Madrid's on it. Razor. Madrid's right. Razor, actually. Yeah, yeah, not Blood Razor, Madrid's Razor, right? It does have the main proc on it, so that does aid in clearing and Wriggles as well. It gives it you gives a bonus you like help. hundred damage every time you auto attack something. So with that bonus attack speed from the Wriggles. And the bonus attack speed from his clear, it, I mean, from his Q, it makes his clear really fast. Now, when you're playing him, how are you maxing his abilities? How are you using those abilities in conjunction with ganks? And, you know, what are some tips and tricks here for the people that may not be seeing or, or seeing or using correctly? Typically, I max Q, W, E, um, you know, max alt whenever it's, get alt whenever it's up. Um, but what and I'll there's do... There's no good reason to max E. No, the, it, it, I mean, the thing with E, it's, it's a pretty short cooldown by itself, and the damage is okay, but... It's 10 seconds um, across all levels. That's why I'm saying, like, there's, there's just no reason. Yeah, the it, slow I mean, gets better, but who cares? When, no, it's, it, a, when it's a root at five stacks, right. no matter what. Um, yeah. But, and this is the thing, like, his cooldown on his Q gets progressively shorter the, the more points you put into yeah. it. So, like, you get maxed out Q, and you're hitting Q, like, every two, three seconds. So you get a lot of Q hits off. Um, I, what I like to do, and I, I, I kind of theory crafted about this, uh, beforehand, if about whether to, or not to run with the, like go into a lane with five stacks of ferocity or, uh, to go in with four and then like kind of count on landing that E to either be able to immediately <laughs> follow up with another E and get the stun or to be able to, to drop like a burst combo. Or if I do land my E and they're slowed, I can jump in from a bush and like, ferocity cue them for a ton of damage mm -hmm. or whatever but um i i like to gank with four stacks of ferocity rather than five especially if i'm ganking a lane that has um built-in cc and unlike a lot of junglers i'll typically camp bot lane particularly after i hit level six so wh why, why are you shaking your head dom because dom you thinks bastard. everyone should you, gank bot lane. you bastard yeah um and <laughs> The major reason for that is... Leave me if alone! You, if you have Leona or Thresh, it's really, really easy to pick up one or two kills almost every time <laughs> you go down there when you have your ult pop. Because, yes, you pop your ult, you up. and they know that you're coming for them if you're within a thousand yards, but they don't know which direction you're coming from. Mm -hmm. So, as well. if you're coming from... You, you could be coming from through lane, and they think you're coming from river, and they go into the brush... So you just jump on them faster or, you know, if you can, you can kind of play some mind games with it. I would like if they didn't know, you know, if, if you were invisible around them, but uh, from what it sounds like, they're going to change it to where if you're in a brush and they wouldn't be able to see you otherwise, they, they won't, anyway, yeah. they won't notice you like when you all. So if that goes through, it makes these ganks even stronger. So, like, say you have a Leona or a Thresh, and they can land that CC, and you can follow up with um, a like five-stack... I don't like hearing this. I don't like any of this. A five-stack ferocity, um, you know, Bola stun, or just dump a ton of damage in with his ferocity Q. Um, you put out a lot of damage really fast, and that's a part of the reason why... Route. That's yeah. a long fucking route. It, it's, it's, it's Almost two 1. seconds, 1. right? 1.75. Right. That's a it's long like Elise's, It's shit? like Elise's cocoon, almost. It's still so, a skill shot that you have to hit. Oh, no, it, it's a skill know, shot, it still, but it's, it's great. It and the other thing is, what I'll do is typically I end up, like I said, I get the Vamp Scepter early. If I get a couple kills early and I'm like pretty farmed on my Feral Flare and I have a decent amount of money, I might just rush down and finish that Hydra. If I'm kind of even with other people, I'll typically either go into a Sunfire or Randwins, whatever I can afford, um, and then work on a, a spirit visage for the extra um, cooldown reduction and the bonus heals from W. Yep. And eventually, and I'm going to get a Hydra. <laughs> um, so you get the the bonus life steal from Hydra, Feral Flare, and W. 
you can tank a surprisingly large amount of well, damage. And you, you can't forget the armor magic resist you're getting from the W from, when you use right, it. Right, from W. And it gains um, more the more people that you W. Right. Um, so but it doesn't it stack if you use ferocity and, and regular. To tank that damage. So I was about to say, you can also <laughs> combo Rengar with somebody like Lulu, who you basically pull that bullshit submarine crap where My you favorite. go in invisible My and then favorite. they combo a Oriana ult or a Lulu ult or whatever with Rengar just because if you're jumping on somebody and they pop that, you're knocking up, <laughs> Double up one and you get three a people or more. Because people and, yeah, forget and that the slow. Lulu has a slow around that after she pops up. I have been able to run in. I, I've, I've been ahead enough to be able to run in between that Lulu and uh, the empowered W, uh, the <laughs> five stack ferocity roar. I could tank like Everybody on the oh, enemy yeah. team and still oh, yeah. kill three people. It's like the one game that I played when I was nine zero and one or whatever it was, and I was I was pretty much three v oneing the enemy team because of W gaining the yep. extra life, gaining the extra armor, magic resist. It, it's it, I I don't he isn't like how he used to be where you kind of just sit around and you you bank on blowing up one person. Now he can actually survive fights and his damage is a little more sustain oriented. But again, my reasoning for getting the Hydra is that you can get the auto attack reset from the ability. You get the ability bonus damage. You get the auto attack reset from your Q. And you can just put a lot of damage into one target in a very, very short amount of time. Um, Multiple targets with the Hydra. Right. Um, plus the attack speed increase. You're hitting more targets and getting more lifesteal. And... Quick question for you on Go using for four instead of five. What, what's your reasoning behind that instead of starting uh, my with the reasoning is, and following is up with a slow? I, I, I like to get the slow off, and if I'm pretty sure I can kill them, um, I won't immediately bola again to stun them. I'll just leap and then try and blow them up with a Q. Um, now, how about if you know their flash is up, then you might then want to it's start a different with story. Four, hit them with a slow, let them flash, and then root it, it, them afterwards? That's a different story. And like I said, I, I typically do that only on a lane with a hard CC. If I'm going to go gank a lane that doesn't have a hard CC, I'll go in every time Start with a five that. stack and go in and try to uh, try to hit that empowered bola just because, you know, you want whoever you're ganking for to be able to get off as many extra hits as possible since they can't help slow the enemy sure. down for you to do that instead. Well, that's good. And I agree with everything you say. <laughs> watching you play Rengar and watching you go through the motions with him, you've seen to make him work. I don't think we've lost with a Rengar with you playing. We Rengar we yet, lost anyway. once, and that was because that Aurelia was so butthurt at me for not ganking. Oh yeah, lane I don't yeah, that, that was, was bad. Game. And she countered. Okay, so if you're playing with a Rengar that has Feral Flare, or don't anybody steal. That has feral yeah, flare. or anybody that has Feral Flare, don't take the big do monsters. Do not steal the big monsters and not clean with the anybody rest with of the fair. camps yeah. to piss them off because you're an asshole if you do that, and I hate you. <laughs> I mean, you've accomplished your goal, but you are definitely making your team lose. Then, like that's, I guess you're, you're you not going to win that game. Uh, having noticed... played with like three different people on Rengar at this point, Adam, I played played with you when you were trying him out. Played Josh with or played with Josh a couple games, and then with Chira a couple games. And like you all have very you all have different styles for doing it. Adam, you still use like the weave in and out of combat approach to kind of like assassinate targets and. Um, you know, just whoever seems like you seems like the person you can murder. Right. Um, Shira or uh, Josh is more of a like start on the priority target, but then like just be like just move from target to target, but not necessarily trying to blow anybody up. He, he's just like he's there, he's doing his thing, but you don't like. I, I never was expecting him to blow somebody up, and that's fine because he took a lot of damage. And then Sean just hopped into the fight and said, "Come at me, bro." And so <laughs> that's not how Chira they came plays. at they came at him, and so it's just like, all right, well, just put everything everything I have into keeping Sean alive because then we will win this fight. Well, and here's, he won all of the fights. Here's the deal with that: the thing with Rengar is his damage is still absurdly high against squishy targets. So if you jump on somebody, it immediately forces the enemy team to either make a panic reaction to deal with you or to let their carry die. So right. if, if you, you can, like, if you jump into a pack of them, you get so much out of battle roar. Yeah, no, that, it, it's, like, it's you're, incredible. You're not going to go down easy. And then, I mean, I think I was Zyra that game, and I think my only items like to to keep him propped up were, um, Mikhail's okay. and Locket. It's not like I had, you know, it's not like I had a shit ton of uh, of support I mean, style. Still Zyra, you still have a AOE. Right. Up. No, no, no. But just just to keep Sean alive specifically. Right. Um. Yeah, I had all the other stuff, and I actually played oh, that game well. Um, that was the other piece to this, too, which 
a lot of you know because they they changed up his uh his uh trinket bone the so bone tooth necklace now doesn't lose stacks when you die um so basically at about 30 something odd minutes later and later on than that you'll usually have a fully stacked bone tooth necklace from kills and assists if you're actually doing stuff to help your team and the thing is you get a lot of passive movement speed from bone tooth necklace now like it's it's an absurd amount of yeah it's just all utility speed. now it's no longer um, damage isn't the max stack 30 so it's no it's of, you gotta 20. be really game. the max stack's 20 is it it's still 20 and it's yeah. one on kill and one on assist rather than yep. two and one. <laughs> um, right. The the kicker the kicker here is I've gotten in a lot of games where I can just sell my boots and buy another bonus item because I don't need any of the extra movement speed just because there's so much baked into his kit simply from the trophy. Well, yeah, and you gain quite a bit of movement speed rolling at somebody while you're while in you're your invisible. It, 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 in and fact, jump at max increases. stacks, the the movement speed I believe doubles. So. You can, like, just See, speed racer people you're down. You're a Ramus. You're, you're just powerballed across the map toward the next person you're running Except at. you do damage, which is <laughs> awesome. <laughs> See, I think more people need to get out there and really play Rengar in his proper location. Like, I just, I, I just think it's a case where the people who are upset with him are trying to play him like he's the like old Rengar, to. and that's just not really just where he's at. Like I said, build Feral Flare. If you're ahead early, buy a damage item and then start building like a bruiser from there. I Again, with just a Randuin's and a Spirit Visage, that was about all the tankiness I needed bet- like with an empowered yeah. roar. Um, oh, absolutely. It's just it's, it's an absurd... But, um, well, it's like the same thing as Shivata. Where Shivata just needs one defensive, defensive item, yeah. realistically, right. to be tanky because she gains so much out of her ultimate. And now Rengar <laughs> has that as long as he's hitting more than one person. With empowered roar, or you know, just roar, right? Doesn't have to be empowered. Uh, but yeah, he Co- good. He he's 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 pretty good. He's pretty decent. And you just if you're looking at him and you're looking I mean, at champions, his stats tell a different story. But right, <laughs> I'm not gonna look at stats for that. I just want to say that people need to also realize that we're probably not gonna see Rengar in the LCS, but we will see Rengar in solo queue. He's and good in solo master queue. Him. There's a lot of champions like that. There are solo queue masters like Fiora being in top five right now. She's right. apparently a solo queue uh, She's guy. not. She's in top ten. The, oh, the top she, yeah. five one that surprised me today was Malzahar, your boy to Claude. Really? Yeah, he's the fourth win winningest rate? champion right now. Yeah, 53.54. Nice. What the fuck? <laughs> people who play him know how to play him. I guess. 3% <laughs> The two games rate. they play him and they win. <laughs> Three <laughs> percent popularity, so he's showing up all the time. I don't like. I don't know where that came from. I'm, I'm gonna look at his items. Like, I, I just don't know what's suddenly making Malzahar this good champion. When before you were just like, oh, good, I have Malzahar. Probably because most people are betting LeBlanc, Nothing. and now they're nerf. And all the other champions that you'd play in mid, all the mobile champions or wave clears have been nerfed. Like, I don't even. I don't even see anything in his items that that's surprising me. It, you know, uh, Doran's ring. Death Cap, Leandris, and Rod of Ages. That's pretty much what you'd expect on I mean, Malvahar. he pushes back pretty well against, like, a Ziggs. It's pr- it's a... I mean, he doesn't have fantastic wave clear until he gets some items under his belt, but... Pretty sure my brother's uh, Malzahar bill way back in the day was uh, Sorcerer's Shoes and Five Rods of Ages. <laughs> so you just don't die. <laughs> just I do don't rush, die. <laughs> do rush Rod of Ages on him, but... Nothing changed with him. Maybe it's just the way the yeah, game changed. I don't know what happened, but all of a sudden he's uh, he's apparently pretty good. Runes could have had a effect on that. Maybe because people aren't running armor in the middle anymore. For the most part, people are running health, flat health, or health health. Per so you level. think like his minion is suddenly uh, helping out a bit more? Well, suddenly he has more <laughs> life, and he's you know he's not taking as much damage from it the was tweaked tumblers. with his priorities in the last patch. That so. was true. That, well, yeah, maybe fixed the maybe priorities. that's it. Yeah, that helps a little bit. That little guy can do a lot of damage. <laughs> that's why I like AD Malzahar and Dominion. I should I need to really play that in the bottom lane. That makes me want to go play Dominion now. Yeah. Warwick Ye and X to the Z. Wait, Yorick? Warwick. Oh, Warwick. Because people are playing Warwick with Feral Flare. Yeah, these yeah. guys all With that bonus comeback. damage. That's good. Um, I do I think we do need to mention something about this is going to be a really fun podcast to edit, by the way. You are all like There's sick a lot of and sick people. Sorry. I'm, gi- I'm giving you the time, I at least. I, 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 I put the time down, sick. too, so don't yell at me. Yeah, Dom's giving me the time to claw just over your coughing. I'm going to have to, like, yeah. a- at least you kind of look Sorry, at the dude. audio for the most part and tell when you guys cough because the waves <laughs> get bigger. Anyway, um, I was yep. going to mention something. What was I just, just, what did I just say? 
Something about the Warwick and those junglers. Feral Flare. There you go. Something that Claude and I talked about earlier this morning. And that people need to realize with Feral Flare junglers and solo queue, that Feral Flare isn't necessarily the reason you're winning the game. It's helping out quite a bit. But if you are winning and your jungler has gotten a Feral Flare and has gotten to the point where he can stack it early between like 12 to 15 minutes, it's the lanes winning those games. Yep. Right. Or, or helping because to win those games. they survived Explain. without you while you're herbivore in there, building Explain. up your Feral Flare. Because you have to spend... Declaude, Declaude just did it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's exactly. Because you have to be herbivore. You have to play Meteo style with Feral Flare. You can gank. You can definitely walk well, out and gank you, and help you can... out. You, I was about to say, you can say that you have to be that way, but you're not really that punished if you can actually go somewhere and make ganks happen. Sure. Because you're still getting a stack. So right, like, you just don't hang out and tax. Right. Yeah, it, it, that's, that's exactly what we're talking about Trindamir, Master Yi, uh, you know, I'm trying to think of anybody else. Warwick to an extent, because he doesn't get to level 6 before he ganks very <laughs> well. I don't know what you're talking about. I Good build... Job. Feral Flare on Trinomir and doesn't gank. Well, no, I'm not saying don't build that, <laughs> but like you can't gank very well to those champions pre six, and they right. don't work. Those champions, like if you watch EUCS, Master Yi, if I remember correctly, went one and two, and it wasn't Master Yi necessarily winning that game. You know, it was his team playing with him, but with the fast push style where we're taking two turrets by seven minutes and then fighting over Dragon, those Feral Flare junglers that don't have CC, like Xin Zhao, aren't doing oh, that yeah. great. Zinzao has CC. What are you talking no, about? No, no, unlike oh, Zinzao. Oh, okay. He's talking about, like, Yi. Master Yi, no, I, I, I misheard. I, I, I misheard your phrasing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's why I don't think we'll see those champions that often in the LCS. I do think they will appear up here as people will try to play them because they feel like they can play around it. But as soon as more people get hip to this fast push style into dragons, getting that early, um, you know, 2K gold lead or 1.5K gold lead that these junglers don't have time to farm. They have to spend more time in the lanes, pushing down turrets and helping their teammates out. And that's where the utility junglers are coming back. Yes, no, anybody? I, I, can, I can agree with that. But the feral, once you do have that Feral Flare created, it is game changing. It's huge. You get that Master Yi with the Feral Flare. He's got it built up because your lanes are decent. They're holding their own. And then all of a sudden he murders everybody and it's like, ugh, I should have banned him. Yeah, I'm not saying that <laughs> they, you shouldn't play those, but, but it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's the difference between team I play it, and solo queue. Exactly. I see it in solo queue a lot. A, in champion select, they be like, oh, I'll farm my Feral Flare in 11 minutes. I'm jungle. Let me be jungle, because I can do this. Well, the only reason you can farm it is because we got to do okay for 11 minutes while you do nothing. Right. And then we got to worry about their Lee Sin or whatever they have, gank in our asses. And you then they're slowly snowballing into their favor, and you're not going to turn the tides like that. So, Have you tried it on Volibear yet? No, I haven't, but I tried it, it on like Diana. It strikes me as a good item for him. It, I Just think it is, because it synergizes like with everything that he does. Between his alt and, and his w. what is it, W? Yep. You know, like yep. It just seems like that's a really good item for him, and then you just take the same approach that you do with uh, Xin Zhao. You buy that item, or you, you get Wriggles, get your Flare, and then you just build nothing but tank stats for the rest. Uh, you kill everything, and they try to kill you, and you just like laugh it off. Cause oh, yeah. Def I think it would definitely you're mad. work. You're a fucking it's, bear. It's an awesome item. You're a I bear, think it works on every jungler. I'm, I'm going to bust it out on Sejuani. I haven't yet, but I'm <laughs> I'm going to go auto attack. Well, and that's Feral like that's Flare an interesting Sedge. conversation. It, it seems like a lot of those like really tank heavy junglers are in a real like like Maokai, Sejuani, um, Amumu is weirdly winning all games, but I I, I attribute <laughs> that to his ult being still broken as hell. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know Zach. There are a lot of champions that it seems like all of a sudden are just really, really falling low, and part of it's—I mean, part of it's because they can't use Feral Flare. But like, at what point do they need to get some love here? Right. Well, Feral Flare isn't the end-all, be-all item for jungle. No, at but least it, it's like, still it, coming no, but out it, and building. It helped, it helped out a subset of junglers mm -hmm. who you didn't see by and like, like when's the last time prior to Feral Flare? When's the last time you saw Jungle Master Yi? You know, Zin Zhao. Yeah, when he first came. Well, Zin Zhao. Yeah. It, you so. know what's funny? We, we a couple a while ago we were calling Zin Zhao to slowly make him come back, and that's funny that it just took one item to make him back into the scene. Right. But like, you know, what I mean, like guys like Zach, who he was supposed to be a jungler when he came out, and then he became a top laner, and that's fine. But it's, you know, I mean, Medios was was anybody other than Medios really playing Zach in the jungle? No, not at the beginning. For a while, no. He came out uh, to the scene playing Zach and showing everybody how well he was. You know, and then they nerfed him, Zach, right? Zach, <laughs> Juani, um, I mean, like, that type of cha champion. J4. Even right. Yeah, Jarvan. You know, like, all these guys don't really get a lot out of Feral Flare, 
Um, Spirit of the Elder Lizard was was nerfed. They don't, they weren't really building that anyway. And Spirit of the Ancient Golem clearly doesn't cut it anymore, because otherwise those guys would be reasonably thriving. Well, you're, lo- that's the, you're looking at champions that have. Well, I can't really say that because J four does have quite a bit of damage new, but they're more utility focused champions like Nautilus and J four, the big ones in season two. Um, Nasus has got a really slow clear speed as well and he was played quite a bit volley bear i guess i could see it come back he was played a bit but like if you're looking at like j4 and nautilus they've got a lot of utility in their kit between how they lock a target down or how they can engage and if they're not getting ganks off because of their utility they don't have a lot of damage and they can't clear quickly and that's the problem with them so you know if you give them more damage to clear more quickly do they suddenly become top laners or mid laners at that point well also um, they did analysis, Feral Flare versus Conservation Stacks, and you get more gold with Conservation Stacks with similar jungling. Right, but you get more so, damage from Feral Flare, Feral Flare. Feral Flare Stacks. Well, they they kind of, um, counted that in when they did the analysis on clear, how fast you can clear the camps, but yeah, for gangs. Sure, and champions, sure. I'm just, saying, I'm just saying overall, like, you know, 20 minutes into the game or whatever, whatever the average time is to convert to Feral Flare, I mean, you're just getting more damage at that point. It's... It, it's- it, oh, it, but unlike the the other jungling items, it's an item that doesn't fall off as the game goes farther. It's better. Right. You don't yeah. sell it for something else. See, all these champions, again, fat. going back to the point, I think all these champions, if you started tweaking their kits, I, it's kind of like Mundo. Is it, so, it, but it, you, is it a kit thing or is no, no, it something? No, I was getting there. Okay. Uh, sorry. Uh, like Mundo, for example, they have never tweaked Mundo's kit. But Mundo's one of those champions that f- rises and falls based on summoner spells and masteries. Um, masteries. And Summoner's Spell has been changed with Heal. Suddenly, Soraka got really good, and nothing has been tweaked on her because Heal came in. Suddenly, Mundo is starting to make a slow comeback because you could remove Ignite off of him. So I'm wondering if those champions as well, like J4, Nautilus, etc., would do better if there was some kind of mastery tweak. I don't know what tweak would be. It would probably be moving around items, you know, like the, the percent... You know how, like, the percent... Uh, the 9.1 wonder percent uh, armor pen and magic pen that we used to have in Season 3, if that was moved back up to the top where you can get it at 9 points, would those junglers suddenly be favorable again? Maybe. I don't know. I feel, to me, it seems yeah. like the, the problem almost lies in Spirit of the Ancient Golem more than anything else. Not to say it's a bad item. I think still people still get it a lot on Elise. <laughs> but I think there's a, a subset of junglers that, by and large, would benefit from that. And if Elise gets out of hand be- so again one. because of it, you can tune her. But I don't think, like, I mean, I don't, I don't think I still I, get it. On I, I don't Sizzwine. feel like it. Yeah, you do, you get it, but it's not like, I mean, to I me, mean, it looks like you look at it and it just sort of feels like an underwhelming item now compared to Spirit of the Elder Lizard and uh, Wriggle slash Feral Flare. Right. Well, yeah. I mean, you also have to look at most of those jungling items compared to what they were in their, their like first iteration have been watered down more and more since they came right, out that's, too. That's because other nerfs. people. <laughs> That's because right. other people were buying them, and they didn't want the uh, top laners buying. Well, I mean, it's it's not just that too. They they reduced the the cooldown reduction, and uh, it th- those items have have seen nerfs. I wouldn't be surprised if we eventually saw some of a, a scaling back on some of the feral flare stuff, um, kind of along that same road. The, there is uh, a, a, the incoming patch is changing feral flare to thirty stacks from twenty five, so the okay. five additional to gain feral flare. Now I want to look at something. It takes you longer in the jungle. It's one more clear. It's, it's a one full clear. clear to right. gain it. Or a team fight ace. Yeah. <laughs> Assuming that you got <laughs> no. <hit> every person. <laughs> if feral flare, if it's not feral flare yet, assists don't build towards the uh, counter. After it's feral flare, then assists build oh, yeah. towards it. So mm-hmm. you, gank, you can gank all day and get a million kills. You'll still be at one stack feral flare, you know, if you just bought your magic, so. Yeah, you have yeah. to herbivore until it turns to Feral Flare. Then you can go start ganking, and it keeps building off of See, that. Even bi- even more reason to go and kill Dragon, because it gives you a stack. <laughs> yep. <laughs> There's a stack right there. Wow, Riggles is wildly gold efficient compared to the other items. Attack speed just became wildly gold efficient because of the rune changes. Well, and the thing that is, it, change it, anything. it opened the, the up. The rune changes. Well, uh, now the runes now are... It doesn't change gold efficiency. I guess you're right. No, no, I'm thinking that the <laughs> ruins became more gold efficient because they changed how much you get on them. But anyway. But attack speed is one of the stats that costs the most, isn't it? To gain, if I remember correctly. Uh, it's, um, 
It's 400 gold for a dagger, which is 10%, 15% attack speed. Yeah. I don't know. I, I can't. Everything's can't look it up that quickly. Everything's taking what, forever to load the now. Runes? No, 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 no. The, uh, just what is gold? 33.3 gold per percentage of attack speed. Okay. Yeah, it's goal. I mean, it's gold efficient. It's a it's a good stat. Um, but it's like it's eighty six point eight percent gold efficient. Can you guys hear me still? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, I, I heard a weird click. It's eighty six point six percent or eighty six point eight percent gold efficient. Um, without factoring in maim, gold generation or wards. Um, Spear of the ancient golem comparatively is sixty two point five percent gold efficient, and then depending on how you value, you know, it get it increases if you. You um, continually gain, it continually gains efficiency based on conservation, and then ten tenacity and butcher. Like depending on how you value those, then it's affected. But you know, I mean, like comparatively, Riggles is a way more gold efficient item from a statistic standpoint. It's a lot cheaper too. And like, like people don't. Yeah, what the hell? <laughs> people don't take. I mean, I don't think people take that type of thing really into account during their their in game itemization because otherwise, like. Frozen Heart would get purchased way more often than it is. Right. Um, but I do, I, I wonder how much of that stuff, that underlying type stuff, really ends up affecting just general item trends. Because even if people aren't looking at the numbers, they sort of realize, like, well, this is, like, I feel like I'm getting more out of this. And there's an underlying truth to that. I don't know. I've never heard anybody talk about gold efficiency. I, you know, all the way up through my travels, I've hardly talked about gold efficiency and what kind of items I should buy based on how yeah, much gold I, I have. Yeah, Sotir and I are the only ones who ever talk about it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, don't, <laughs> we don't talk about Sotir in this podcast anymore. He, he He's no longer a person. He's dead to me. Wow. Oh, <laughs> Sotir. Sotir's still a friend of the podcast, you hater. He's Get dead to me. Get out of here. Oh man, I've been wearing compression socks all day, and I finally got them off my feet. My uh, suddenly, I feel like I could breathe. Everybody needed to know that. Yeah. Ooh. All right, I'm gonna ask why. Why? Because <laughs> compression socks are amazing. <sighs> Have you ever worn them? No. They help blood flow blood flow in your legs, and they don't hurt after leg day. Duh. No. I don't know. <laughs> if you were running and oh, you wore dumb. compression socks the next day, and you got cramps, they would stop the cramps. Oh, get. I don't. I don't usually get cramps after running because oh, you just must you know. be a stretch master. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. Um, I, run a I run. A lot. I hurt myself while I'm running. Well, that's a different story. <laughs> well, maybe you shouldn't drink and run. Yeah, <laughs> that would help. But uh, I'm not gonna stop doing that. <laughs> I've right. been doing a feral flare on Pantheon, even though when you look at it, Spirit of the Elder Lizard should be better. But feral flare is so friggin' awesome. I, I just noticed it's disgusting on him. Again, I'm charging my passive a lot faster. So, blah, so blah, you're blah. almost in the camp where it's just like get Feral Flare because it's better than all the items and it doesn't matter what champion you're on. Almost. Like you weren't, you weren't joking about Sejuani. No, I want to try it on because when you're sitting there sticking to him <laughs> with your Northern Winds flailing around, you're, you're auto attacking and you're, pro you're keeping your passive refreshed with the armor every time you hit with an auto attack. Yes. So you sit there Feral Flare. <laughs> They're slow. They can't go anywhere. They're going to take auto attacks from you. You're going to smack even things. more. Wouldn't Spirit of the Elder Lizard do more damage because of Northern Winds? I wonder. No. No, because it doesn't, it it doesn't proc on hit effects. It's magic damage. Right, physical. but her W does magic damage, so it would proc off her W, right? No. It's not no, magic it's damage. Off off that anyway. it's, only, it's, physical, it's not auto oh, attacks. No. It's physical damage. The big That's why like Pantheon the... Spear oh, does oh, physical damage, so it'll throw that little dot. But, yeah, I would always get uh, Sotag, the ancient golem, on Sejuani for more tankiness. But she's kind of naturally tanky, and if I'm keeping the auto attacks there, I don't know. I want to try it just to see how it is, even though it, jungle Aurelia. <laughs> it looks terrible on paper. But Plus, yeah, where's I, our jungle I, masses? Plus, yeah. I really like the, the extra ward distance you get out of Feral Flare 2. It's pretty oh, crazy. Yeah. It Once saves lives. Saves lives. Jungle Shen. <laughs> All right, you're done. Here. Jungle... We're we're done talking about Feral Flare. We're moving on to the next topic now. I think All right. people have enough listeners. There's so much we can talk about it because it's going to be player. nerfed to the ground. I can smell it. <laughs> it's too awesome right now. I was going to say something, but it wouldn't have worked out. So let's do some... Are we going to go to <laughs> listener questions? Can. We can. Sure. Let's or, do it. Or do we want to talk about runes real quick? I know I have had some requests to talk about runes a little bit. We can, we can talk about no, runes. No, no. Don't ruin it. 
I won't ruin it. I'll make it nice and easy for All you right. to clod. That's a long Appreciate time coming. That's yeah. a long time coming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I don't. I kind of talked about runes last week and kind of what people should be running. Um, I went through all of my runes this weekend. Like, Sunday was the perfect day for me. So this is a half derail, half on topic. So I opened all the windows in the house. It was 80 degrees here in Cincinnati. I did all my chores and everything. And then I, after I got all done, I was like, I still feel like doing more work. So I sat down, I cleared every single one of my rune pages, all 20 of them. And I started fresh from the beginning. And I only got 10 rune pages made because I couldn't think of 10 more rune pages to make after I got done. With that said, I did all of my rune pages except, except for mid and support as four armor and then scaling and five scaling seals because I wanted that little bit of extra armor in the top lane to bump me up to nine total armor. What did you, what'd you do for support? Did you do my runes? Uh, I didn't actually look at your runes. I made three. We talked about them. I, I made three or four support pages, actually. I did, wow. uh, yeah. I did like armor marks. Um, so I did like four... What did I do? Shoot, I had to bring it up. Like four uh, HP per five. I actually buy, had to buy seals. I had to buy HP per five seals. Um, I did like four HP per five seals, health at 18, you know, then like uh, magic resist. And then some pages had AP, some pages had um, move speed. And, you know, like all those things. Like the quints were the ones that I really dicked around with for the most part. Like I feel like I have more control over what I can put on my page now because I don't have to run nine flat seals of any type anymore. Yeah, that, that was, that was the intent. point behind it, because why would you before? Why wouldn't you? You know, so exactly. I don't know. I changed my Leona page to nothing but health and health regen to make up for her little nerf, <laughs> and I figure health is as effective as armor mm -hmm. early on if you have the regen to regen it back if you're not taking too much soak. So yeah, I've got a Vlad page for when his E becomes unbugged. That's got flat <laughs> health quints and scaling health per level seals and. Cool, uh, cool down reduction oh, blues and stuff. Here's a question for you. Flat health quints or the 1.5 percent health? Percent quince? health is bad. Yeah. Percent. percent health is bad? Okay. The flat health. Because they have those. You can get up to, what is percent it, 4. Health 5? is Percent health is only good super late in the game if you and prioritize really buying health. Early. And even then, like, it's hard for percent. Like, at this point now, especially for the seals, it's really hard for the percent health seals to outperform the scaling health seals you, you, like with vlad because vlad gains ability power for building health you might as well run flat health to gain additional ability power early in the game to help you last hit and push give you a little quicker like spike. it it takes a really um difficult like it, it's a we it's not a weird number but it's a high number of health for high amount of health for you to start breaking even um with the health seals and then at that point you've basically prior or three thousand uh, it's health? between three and four thousand. Oh, that's a lot of health. Yeah, and so like at that point, you basically had to pri you basically prioritized health over all other stats, and yeah. so your effective health is still lower as a result. Yeah. There, okay. I don't, I'm not. They need to do something to those runes because right now they're trap runes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With runes, what I like about this rune change, and but people would ask me, what do you run? How do you do this? Really, you need to make rune pages now. Now is a better time than ever to have 20 rune pages because I can go in there and I can start going. Like those last 10 rune pages that I said I didn't know what to fill with, I'm going to start doing those per on a matchup basis. I'm going to go play a matchup and go, okay, well, if I'm ever in this matchup again playing Renekton, I need to have a little extra armor or I need less armor and I need more damage. Like now I can change my seals and I can change all the rest of my runes on a per matchup basis and i don't think it matters anymore what you run in the seals as much as it did in the past you could run all scaling health and past level two you're fine or you could run all armor if you don't want to go change your rune pages and still come out you know even like you should be focusing more on your gameplay than you should be on min maxing your runes what about flat health seals eight health per they're still pretty, pretty damn those good. are fine those are fine like yeah. that that's really just a preference thing um People right. advocate the merits of scaling health because, like, they become incredibly efficient just the more the game goes on. Um, and then the the opponents to that are like, yeah, but the early game is wh like when the game is most volatile and you really want to have as much health as you can get. And seals are like the only one of the only ways you can do it unless you're buying um, like a Doran shield because nobody else only supports might buy ruby crystal and that's a might. The only thing that has changed yeah. now for, like, 80 carries is just before you would run attack speed marks and 80 quints. And I think I mentioned this last time. If you are going to run that, you are now running 80 marks and attack speed quints. Attack speed quints, yep. 
Um, if you are going to run the Butcher Mastery, which is the <laughs> three health every time a minion dies, three health and one mana, you want to run an, a Lifesteal Quint instead of an Attack Speed Quint, because then the that puts you... Is it Feast or Butcher? Feast. Okay. Butcher's the um, effect on the uh, jungle item. So it's the first tier one. Yep, Feast. Okay. Uh, yeah, you want to run Butcher now, because if you want that lifesteal in bottom lane, so if you feel like you're going to take a lot of poke down there, like you're going against a Caitlyn, run Butcher and one um, lifesteal Quint, and now you are back to running that 4% that you had in Season 3, or you know earlier in Season 4. I've been doing really weird like i've been running a lot more health regen and mana regen on my support pages for my seals um, i actually have a couple pages from support i have one page and this one I'm, was mana regen quite a bit a lot of mana regen yeah i'm really i'm really toying around with it like i and i'm i i actually really like it i try like i ran it on that zyra game that actually you know the one that went really well and we we bumped me up to adequate from <laughs> from inadequate and even that was from terrible um but I I just I find that like it, it kind of just addresses a lot of the early issues that you used to be trying to address through like Doran's shield or other items and that type of thing. And so it, it just means like for me for me specifically it helps out because I run the two I, I get two wards rather than a ward and a potion. So like I, I don't know, I feel like it solves a lot of the problems and it means I can stay in lane for a really long time because you know what like just by hanging out and and uh, and maneuvering properly, I'm getting all of my resources back, right. so I can keep doing the things that I need to do to be effective. But like at no point that game that uh, that I played with you, Adam, like at no point did I feel like I needed to go back to base because I was almost dead, unless it so was you, you know run? just like from taking Pope. What do you want what? for mana regen? I have a few different pages with uh, with mana regen. One of them I have um, all of my glyphs. Our Glyphs, mana regen, that's what I figured. Okay. and that's like a really, uh, that's a really aggressive. Like that's the one that I have my hybrid pen marks on, and then it's health, uh, flat health, and health regen seals, um, okay. and health quints. Because just yeah, yeah. Fuck it. Hel it's health, health, health regen, mana regen is perfect for support. But yeah. the interesting thing is, like, because you can get basically the same amount of armor from armor marks. Um, I know I don't run armor marks on any of my pages anymore. Or I'm sorry, I don't run armor seals, like even partial armor seals on any page because I'm just like, I'll, I'll just take marks instead. Um, and then so I have a page with armor marks, uh, MR, glyphs, and then half HP and half MP regen. Like gotcha. it's both both types of regen. And, and then health. And seals, uh, seals and or quints are, again, That's health. similar to how wow. my page, but I did... This is, like, my karma page is magic pen marks. I did four <laughs> armor seals, five mana regen seals, and then I did uh, five mana regen glyphs, and then magic See, resists. So what that I, way I got 3.7 per five mana regen, and I can harassing. continue to be harassing and poking. And then I did my quints were flat AP. And again, that's, like, a karma page where I have a lot of mana regen back. I can continually spam my spells and keep or the Annie. poke up. See, the weird thing is I no longer feel like any of my pages are geared specifically towards one champion or one type of champion. It's geared, like they're all now designed for the matchup that I'm going into. Do I expect my opponent to be really aggressive? Then I have a more defensive inclined page that I'm going to run. Um, if, I'm, if I feel like I'm going to be really aggressive and I don't have to worry about a lot of counter harass and that type of thing, then I have, you know, I have the page to go for, for, for that. Which is really interesting because before I had a page, like the page I always ran on Alistar and the page I always ran on Leona and I like, I, I never had to think about it. So, um, right. it's weird. It's exciting, but it's weird. I have to jump real fast, continue either jump on the list of questions, continue the conversation, guys. Well, I think we've hit runes pretty good. You want to move on to listener questions? Yeah, we can do that. Since we've pretty much talked about our rune pages and the differences, you know. I'm just going right. to say, I still only have five rune pages, and I haven't even changed anything, and I just don't care. Because you're a lazy you're bastard. I don't have I money Nobody to buy more you. rune pages, so... Nobody likes you. Whatever. I'm doing fine. You can buy so. them with IP! I don't have any IP, because I buy champions with IP, because <laughs> I have more fun that way. The worst kind of person. I'm the best you're the worst, kind of You're the worst kind of co-host. I'm the greatest. It's, it's fine. Sean. All right, don't do what Sean does. Sher yeah, don't do what Sheridan. I do. Sheridan. Sheridan. Sheridan, Sheridan. Got capital A, right. Sheridan. What are your thoughts? <laughs> Sheridan. What are your thoughts of on the importance of early, mid, late game and the current state of the game? So it's funny because like this came in question. around like 
I, I want to say it was like 4.2, 4.3 when this patch came out. So really? So was much, that old? When this, when this question came, so it was like, so yeah, much has we changed much since then. Plan. Well, sort of, except it's a broadly applicable question. <laughs> so, um, I like these sorts of questions. Yeah, now with Feral Flare, early game, survive your lane so your jungler can get his Feral Flare. <laughs> yeah, I feel like like early game is super important now. Yeah. Well, it depends how we're going to talk about this question. Are we talking about it from an LCS standpoint, or are we talking about it from a solo queue standpoint? I think we got to talk about it from a solo queue standpoint. I don't think. You yeah, can... that's probably where most people are asking these questions. Yeah, I mean, LCS is like it's a totally different <laughs> ball game right now. We're all on the same page here before we started talking about aggressively pushing down towers or something. Well, I just end up having to use like nothing but LCS examples going forward for this. You can't really like I, can't, I mentioned it earlier. There, it's four man pushes and towers at this point in the LCS. Again, lane swaps and all this game. other garbage. So. Right. And yeah, for all the people that are like, oh, what about the the three v one mids and everything? It's like now they just abandon that. They're doing four one zero. Yeah, they are. The mids just <laughs> sit there. They are. The mids just sit there. They're like, yeah, well, whatever. But um, I, I miss the beginning of this. Did we touch on everything? I'm assuming. No, you came back. No, yeah, we're good on runes. We're, we're just starting the listener question. Okay. Um, we just started it, so early, mid, late game, general thoughts, Sheridan wants to know. So, I don't know, I think with Feral Flare that changes the early game a little bit more. It's a little bit more important based on your jungler. So, I guess you gotta make sure you're not taking unnecessary risks and This game right usual. now, we talked about it, I want to say it was last week that we talked about it, where we said late game, a lot of the games have been going to late game, it's harder to carry individually. So, there is not as big of importance on early mid game is is late game at this point because a lot of the teams aren't snowballing out of control anymore like the average length of the game is probably about 35 minutes now does lol king have that stat no i was gonna say that that sounds right though i mean most games seem like they go much much longer in comparison to what they've they've gone in the past at least for my experience yeah, and so I would say that the focus right now is making it... The focus on early game is always not dying at level 2 and allowing the snowball out of control. Uh, for solo queue, it really comes down to that mid game and when your team can take dragons and when your team can make opportunities happen for ganks and taking early and taking towers. But it needs to scale into the late game where you have control of the game. Like, you need to focus... That's where the mid-game comes in. You want to take control of the game in mid-game so it doesn't get the super late game where those people are pushing back. Sean, you were in that game. We went 60 minutes because the team couldn't push down an inhibitor because all right. they did wasn't... They never grouped up together. And so when you're talking in solo queue, take control of the game and realize in mid-game is when the game is going to start uh, really playing out and you have to push down turrets and take control of the game and not allow it to be at that point where your lanes aren't really... You ever been in those games where like all three lanes aren't really pushing in your favor and they have the three inhibitor turrets still up and you don't really know what to do? Like, do yep. we siege? Well, we don't have really good siege. That's when you need a shot caller. Yeah, and, and so you just have <laughs> so I guess, to... I guess I know what to do in that situation, so... I'm saying, but in a solo queue scenario, you can't... It's hard to tell your team exactly what to do. Like, cause, you That's know, when everyone goes off to more. farm the lanes because they're kind of pushing in your direction, kind of not, you know, and... <laughs> And then, then everybody gets separated. caught. Guys. Then you get a pick. Yep. <laughs> right. So I would put I if it was me, I'd put importance on the mid game uh, much more than I would on early at this point and, and really snowballing it. The mid game for sure shapes the late game more than the early game is shaping the mid game at the moment. So it's one of those things like I feel mid game is way more important than it's been. Um and again, you're not snowballing out of control in the early game. Uh, yeah, as long as you're not feeding. Right, right, yeah. As long as you're not feeding like a collie or other people who can get way ahead and end it quickly. Yeah, um, yeah I guess to me, it's still like early game is the ga the stage of the game I don't want to be in. To me, like that's just it, it's like a fucking madhouse during early game right now. But maybe that's just because I'm a so you like to push support and get it over with, get the turn. Yeah, I want like I want early game to be done as quickly <laughs> as possible because I do not want to deal with all the bullshit that tends to come my way. Right. And maybe it's just me. Maybe it's the people I'm playing with. Maybe it's, it's the people I'm playing That's against. Why. I don't know what it is. Yeah, I'm bot lane. I do not like... I, I hate yeah, early games. You don't game really venture point. outside of bot lane at all, do you? Like playing don't other get roles. The oh, yeah. No, I, I never do that because I like playing support a lot. <laughs> that, like, well, That's really what it is. It's not even... It's not... Well, it, it's funny that you say that. Oh, Mott's in the chat right now giving you guys skin codes. Look at you, Mott. There you go. <laughs> 
Excuse but, me, guys. you know, it's funny. I'm not saying that your uh, perception is skewed by any means, but it's funny when you talk about that, no, how you warped. want to get out of there. But, yeah. because it's, I, No, it's definitely warp. but that's, like, that's how I pr- approach the game. I'm like, I do, like, I fucking, I want early game to be done. I want to get to the mid and late game because that means everybody in the game has new and, re, like, reoriented reoriented priorities and it's no longer the spotlight is no longer on bot lane because it's no longer a case where everybody's trying to just gank the hell out of bot lane plus you can impact your lane better as a support or your whole entire team better as a support than just one person you know you, you yeah, get the Leona that, Solar Flare and everyone dogpiles them instead it's of just more satisfying in that regard yeah so I can see that I, I like to get to the mid game faster too especially my advantage on bottom lane just so we can get the dragon because you push that turret down Maybe you get a kill on one of them, boom, you go for the dragon. Easy dragons from there on out. Yeah. <laughs> I guess backing up to what Adam said, like I think about it and it's like, it's not that I'm not interested, and I know I should venture out into other roles, I would become a better player if I did. I just really like playing support, and it's kind of a case where playing something other than support is a less fun experience for me, so why do it? Right, it's a and game. Since, <laughs> play it to have since fun. Pretty much everybody, is, like since you rarely run into it, you, cases where other people want to support, you know, it, it kind of it works out well for me in that regard. Like basically, say, when Ert and I play, we're in trouble. But how many times have you seen people threaten to rage quit over fighting over a support role? Well, the funny part is that <laughs> if you get into a game with like a, a top lane, a top main, a jungle main, and then a uh, and then three support mains, they won't even rage. It's just like okay. Um, well, you take it, you know, like, it, you come up with a reason why the person who gets to play support takes it, and then the other people are like, yeah, okay, so I'm a support main, this is gonna be a little rough, just bear with me and we'll do the best we can, but everybody's, like, pretty cool with it if you run into that situation. <laughs> and that's not the case if you run into, like, you know, three mid late mains. Or, 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 yeah, even two junglers. It's yeah. like, oh, well, shit, that's nah, the I play, you know, If you get Josh get... playing jungle, suddenly he can't do anything but Tebow top, and then he, <laughs> it's a shit show. Yeah, <laughs> and I get, have, yeah. a, like, I mean, I'm a terrible jungler, and I'm, like, a, not a good marksman player. I have champions that I can play in each role. I mean, I'm a, you know, I'm a liability <laughs> Don't to my expect team. Great I won't lie that, but I mean, I'll lie about that. I always I expect great things out of Dob. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be warding yeah, getting the sights on his ADC. Now. I could just play Lulu, man. That's who I should play. That's who you should play. <laughs> there you go. Do you know how to be a great... No, see, but he, his problem is he can't focus on either CS and harassing. It's one or the other. Oh, yeah. Like, my, my instinct is to not CS. It's not even one or the other. <laughs> my instinct is to not last hit. Yeah, see, when I play support, I automatically take any last hits that my <laughs> ADC is going to miss. Like, yep. you can tell when your ADC is going to miss it. And I'm just like, yeah. yep, there's my thresh hook. I'm taking that one. I can too. Like I can tell now. I just am slow to remind myself that I should take that CS. It's really hard for me to use that fucking uh, Riddick, uh, the Re- shield. Uh, relic shield. The relic yeah. shield. That's it. Oh yeah. All right. Uh, if you guys are watching live, uh, I'm gonna try to get Matt Nagorum in here because we're gonna start wrapping this podcast up now. I'm gonna try to get Matt Nagorum in here. We're gonna do maybe a quick after hours pack so you guys can tell you what Pax East was like and the T-shirts and the buttons and everything so you guys know what you missed. Um, with that said, don't forget about the contest that we are running with lol-coaching.com they do a fantastic job of bringing diamond and plat level level coaches in to take care of you it's really cheap too it's like ten dollars an hour to coach <laughs> pretty good that's it, pretty good considering that pro players are like 35 sure, to 40 dollars an hour dude more. they'll charge more than that oh they're they're really expensive yeah. it's the, what like a year and a half ago it was like 200 bucks an hour it was, i mean it was ridiculous They'll do it cheaper if they can stream while you learn, but since they're probably making fun of you and, and such, and the chat's definitely going to make... I mean, a lot of people just don't respond to that pressure well. <laughs> and it's great, because if you guys go look at LL-Coaching, they actually have a lot on there. Like they, You can go in there and say, I want to work on this specific matchup for an hour, and they'll do that, or I want I want you to play a game with me. Like There's different tiers and prices based on what kind of coaching that you want. So go check them out. Uh, go to tinyurl.com forward slash where is it tinyurl.com forward slash lol coach go to that article on there find what scene that i talk about in that article email that scene to contest at trinityforcepodcast.com this goes till two goes for two weeks until the end of april and you will be in the running for an hour of coaching and if you decide to pick up coaching because you don't think you're going to win the contest do write in and let us know how that coaching went because we want to be able to say yes or no to continue working with these guys they you know they seem great and they and they from what I've been told, they do great things. Relevant question. How many winners are we picking? One. Just one. Just one. 
All right, guys, enter. Fight for your spot. Your chances are low. Just go, just go pay for it. It's cheap, man. I mean, it's cheap, but you might as well. It's easy enough to go there and do it. That's why you got two weeks to do it. And so. you'll become a better jungler than I am. If you don't make it, go to Battle Arena. Uh, yes, and and if you if you are listening, the after hours right now, if you're listening live, this isn't going to happen, but you're going to hear Snagglewolf's voicemail about Caitlyn. That's happening. That oh one? God. That really old one? <laughs> yes. It's going to play. So here it comes, guys. Listen to it if you're watching the podcast. If not, stay around for live. We will see you all next week.